Welcome to AEW Change the World, a TW 2016 save game set to begin in May 2019. Of course, there's a few months between the formation of All Elite Wrestling and the start of the save, so first things first, we need to fill in those gaps. Here's the timeline of AEW, the story so far. As far as tangible history for the promotion, that press conference on the 8th of January 2019 was really where it all began for All Elite Wrestling. No longer was the company merely an idea or a concept, it was a living, breathing promotion. With talent signed, events scheduled, and their ethos laid out, AEW was ready to change the world. Or, as Chris Jericho put it, change the universe. With a checkbook of the Khan family behind them, and the goodwill of fans desperate for a genuine WWE alternative, interest in the company was only amplified by the signings they made. XWE stars like Chris Jericho and Pac joined independent wrestling veterans like SoCal and Censored, while up and coming names like Britt Baker, Joey Janela, and MJF set the tone for the coming months. It wasn't only the attention of fans that AEW grabbed, with Ring of Honor and the WWE looking to counteract the momentum of the upstart promotion. While WWE continued their policy of hoovering up talent left, right, and centre, ROH took a slightly different approach. Looking to strengthen their association with New Japan Pro Wrestling's Mexican ally CMLL, the company many believe will be most hurt by AEW's formation made a series of shrewd business decisions. While the exodus of talent from ROH to AEW was not something they'd welcomed, Ring of Honor would not go down without a fight. Rumours continued to suggest that AEW wanted in on a talent sharing agreement with New Japan, and many believe they could secure a key piece of that puzzle should they sign the much coveted Kenny Omega. Another landmark in the history of the young promotion, a second press conference on February 7th saw a number of announcements made. This included the confirmation of Kenny Omega's signing, as well as a working agreement with AAA. This partnership was particularly interesting, as it saw them go into business with CMLL's closest rivals and appeared to make any relation with NJPW even less likely. With New Japan starting their own rebuilding job on the other side of the Pacific Ocean, the decision to remain loyal to their agreement with ROH facilitated an ever closer relationship between the direct rival of AEW and CMLL. Looking forward towards the co-promoted Madison Square Garden show, ROH and New Japan's alliance appeared to be stronger than ever. While the G1 Supercard stood out on what was a packed WrestleMania weekend, the departure of Marty Skull was confirmed shortly after the event. Coming as a surprise to nobody, the elite member was written out of ROH television, turned on by his Villain Enterprises associates, PCO and Brody King. With AEW on the brink of securing another important piece of their puzzle, the W reminded them just how far they had to go, putting on another memorable WrestleMania show. Featuring female superstars in the main event for the first time ever, the WWE came out of the event with a renewed momentum. AEW would now look to their own big moment, the debut show in company history. With everything in place, and Excalibur and Alex Marvis confirmed to call the action, All Elite Wrestling was ready to change the world. First step, going double or nothing. <laughs>